Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. This is Hunter from Out and Asher Photography. If it kind of seems like I'm a little stopped up, I am a little bit under the weather currently, dealing with some sort of sickness this week. That's why videos have been kind of slow for the most part. And plus, it won't stop raining here over on Delmarva. But we do got some brand new news coming from ZWO. A release of a brand new Deep Sky camera. On the market now available, the ZWO ASI 585MC Pro, which is a one-shot color camera based on the brand new 4K Sony CMOS sensor. That's a 1 by 1.2 inch format with a small pixels of 2.9 uh, UM, which is makes it for something similar to you would see for planetary wise. So let's get into the details right off of their website here. The ZWO ASI 585MC Pro at a staggering price of only $599. That's a very affordable cooled camera for the most part. And it looks, you know, very typical to your normal ZWO cameras that you would see. You can see the cooling system in the back, the sensor, I mean, the famous red. When looking at the back of this, you can see it has two USB 2.0 outs, the USB 3.0 in, and of course the 12 volt 3 amp plug be able to run the cooler with. So all that is still very standard, no differences in with that. And we got a nice rectangular sensor. Now myself, I know a lot of people love the 533 and the square sensor. I'm not a big fan of square sensors myself. It just looks weird to me. I like normal rectangular sensors just because it, it looks more appealing to me wise. But that's just the gist of this, the background, but let's get into the nitty gritty details of this camera in general, which the one thing right off the bat that they're talking about that it is a new DSO camera with high sensitivity. Let's read into the details. The ASI 585MC Pro is a new ZWO deep sky camera based on the 4K Sony CMOS sensor with a 1 by 1.2 inch format and 2.9 UM pixels. It has a super high sensitivity and a large resolution of 3840 by 2160, which is about a 8.29 megapixel camera. Also features a high transmissible speed and high speed mode. The fast frame rate can reach 47 at a full resolution at 4K. That's actually not bad for frame rates, especially if you're wanting to do imaging of some planets you need that high frame rate and especially a 4k that's pretty darn good now i know a lot of planetary photographers want you know as much frame rate as possible but at 4k that's actually not too terribly bad as a lot of like the sony cameras that can do 4k are now reaching upwards to 60 frames per second or even higher now in this day of age but it is being advertised as being an entry-level DSO camera which offers great advantages at high cost effectiveness which is exactly what we like to hear because we all know that this hobby is very expensive overall and of course you still need the external power you need to use the cooler on there which is the very similar 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter center pole, uh, center pole positivity you know this if you already have one of these cameras, you already know what kind of plug that you need. So let's get in towards the details of what this camera has to offer. It has the IMX585 sensor, which is a new one from Sony, which is the Starvis 2, which has been coming out, which has been really effective for some of these brand new planetary cameras that have the Starvis 2 um, system. And they get some really good results with it. This has actually been mocked off of a planetary camera that already exists, the 585. But this is a cooled camera that you use for deep sky astrophotography. And like I mentioned, it has a 4K resolution at 3840 by 2160. When we're looking at an ADC, it's at a 12-bit color not too terribly bad there is obviously better ones out there like with the 2600 mc duo which also has the start of a sensor as the guide sensor it has an adc bit rate of about 16 so you're not going to get as much colors but still not too terribly bad out there for the market 
and they advertise for uh, FPS of 47 for a full frame, you know, full resolution. But I bet you, if you were to step it back down to about 1080p, you're probably going to be doubling those frames, and you're going to be basically having a Swiss Army knife that you can use this as a planetary camera with frame rates probably up to 100, or you can use this for deep sky and have the effects of having the cool down system to have less noise when doing deep sky. So that's really cool too. It has a nice full well of about 47 ke. Not too bad in comparison with the say 2600 which has a full well of about 50. So it's not too far off especially with these brand new sensors. Uh, has a read noise at about 0 0.9e. Not too terribly bad compared to the 2600 it's at 0 0.9 as well and or even with the 294 which is a nice uh beginning sensor as well which has an even higher read noise overall so this is on par with the same read noise as the 2600 that's really really good especially for this price point and of course it can cool down to 35 degrees celsius delta t of your ambient temperature the DDR3 uh, onboard like buffer, it's about a half gig. That's actually, I think, a little bit better than the 2600, if I'm not mistaken. No, I guess with the new one, the tw uh, still 512 in comparison to the 294, which is at 256. So that's why it does have a little bit of a faster speed to get those frame rates up. Of course, it's USB 3, and it has a quantum efficiency of 91% with a Bayer matrix pattern of red, green, green, blue, which is very typical for a lot of these sensors here. But the really nice part is, is the small pixel size of 2.9. That really comes into play, especially for those who are doing planetary photography, especially because you want to have as much pixel depth as you possibly can, especially when you're dealing with high frame rate, tons of frames that you're capturing for planetary imaging and then trying to stack them on top of each other but more thing is this basically what they're trying to call it the swiss army knife for beginners if you want to do deep sky but you don't have a planetary camera you technically have both here with the starvis 2 technology brings the asi 585mc more advanced imaging performance compared to the other cooled cameras its high frame rate makes it not only suitable for dso photography but also for solar lunar planetary photography now it does say solar but I wouldn't recommend it for solar unless you're just doing white light. You're just looking at the dark regions of a sunspot, then that's okay. If you plan on using this with a hydrogen alpha scope, this is not going to work very well for you because when looking at hydrogen alpha, it's going to be confined more to the red of the color spectrum. So you're only using about 25% of your sensor and you're losing all that nice detail. So anytime that you're looking into... Uh, a camera especially for using hydrogen alpha for sun always go monochrome because you're not going to lose all that detail and be able to use the entire sensor overall but for like planetary itself like the moon jupiter saturn mars all that does pretty well and we have this image taken by jim rivera of jupiter that looks very very nice with that setup going down a little bit there is the moon from christopher not too bad, that's some really great detail in that image. Going down a little bit, NGC 3372, that looks like the Carina Nebula to me, but that looks like a southern uh, hemisphere object, and that is Simon Lewis who took that, and of course the Orion Nebula from Simon Lewis as well, M42. Now, with the Starvis 2 technology was developed by Sony and involved from Starvis, it's the latest technology with a wider dynamic range of super high sensitivity beyond the human eye benefiting. It is very nice sensitivity to signal to noise ratio is greatly improved compared to some of the other sensors out there like the IMAX 4A5 which is a planetary camera which only has a, a 13 ke where this one has a 47 so you have greater higher sensitivity for you know deep sky astrophotography and it has a very large full well 
There were four times of the last generation of the 485 sensor, as well as getting a camera of the higher efficiency in collecting light and restraint from highlighted areas from being overexposed, and it can improve your signal-to-noise ratio, which is great. And another wonderful aspect of this, in comparison to some of the other or earlier generation Deep's uh, DSO cameras, is Amp Glow. Now, I know for some people, Amp Glow is not too much of a big deal, but... For me, I didn't go with anything that has amp glow because that means you just have to have more calibration frames. Well, with this one, you don't have to worry about amp glow. It looks like that's going to be a thing of the past now that it has a very clean dark frame with zero amp glow all in all. Compared to the 294, which does have amp glow, you just have to have calibration frames, but it is really easy to take it out if you happen to. And of course, we got the 512 megabyte DDR3, which makes it much faster because of that buffer. Basically, it's like onboard RAM. You're able to get that higher frame rate at 47 at the full resolution speeds, which is really cool. And of course, it has the USB 2 hub. You can connect other various things like USB devices, electronic focus view, guide cameras, etc., etc. And of course, it has the two stage cooling. And of course, when the sensor is warmer, you're going to have more noise. That's very typical. That's a nice benefit of having a cool, DSO, uh, a cool DSO camera instead of using like a DSLR where you have to worry about trying to capture at the same temperature throughout the night. You have to have calibration frames that are somewhere close. You can just have one dark library for whatever temperature you're at, negative 10, negative 20, etc., etc. And of course, the lower the temperature, the less noise you're going to be looking so looking down here for power efficiency it's very typical of course it's going to use more or less low read noise high dynamic range and this is the other thing that really stood out to me is when we looked at some of the other um dso cameras usually the unity gain was about a hundred when we're looking at the 2600 down at the bottom we scroll on through, you can see Unity Gain is about 100, but with the 585, the Unity Gain is much higher. It's at 210, and you can see the difference between the read noise. Actually, uh, it's actually 252, as a matter of fact. Wow. So that's a really high gain to get that lower noise, uh, low signal-to-noise ratio with this camera so you have a higher gain that's why this new Starvis 2 technology be able to use a higher gain without overexposing everything and keeping the read noise down so here is all the graphs to show the different color spectrums of what they provide as far as uh, relatively for the QE peak and it's advertised as 91% you can see the red spectrum, the greens and the blues. Same goes for quantum efficiency. It looks like it's definitely much more sensitive in the green and red rather than the blue. So that's not too bad. And when we're looking at the back focus, it is 55 millimeters, very similar to all the other ZWO technologies that we have. As far as backspacing wise, you can still connect EFWs to it. Uh, electronic uh, assisted of focusing and just all the nitty gritties and stuff in the box you get the camera bag you get the camera quick guide you get adapters USB cables you actually get both the USB 3 and a USB 2 you get the M42 to M48 extender you get a nose piece as well if you want to use it for uh, planetary wise you get the tilt adapter you get another extender for 21 millimeter to get that 55 millimeter back focus in general and the cover I mean for someone who is trying to get out of the realm of using like DSLR cameras and really want to step their toes into going in the cooled camera function at $599 that is really affordable compared to some of these other sensors like the 2600 MC Duo where you're looking at a price tag of two grand, or even the older generations like the 294, you're talking about a thousand dollars. But if you want a nice camera, kind of just all around use 
for Deep Sky to getting into starting off with a one shot color camera, be able to do planetary with the same camera without having to change it out. This is a great start, and I really like what ZWO is doing with this. And for five hundred ninety nine dollars, you you would think most new DSLRs this day that people are, are imaging with are more expensive than this. When you got mirrorless going over in like the four, uh, like over a thousand dollars, the four digits. This is great. This is a great start, and I really hope that they continue have more innovation with the Starvis too. Now, what really makes me wonder is, are they going to make a mono version of this? Because if they're going to make a mono version, as you know, I have been using the 2600 one shot color camera. I've been doing, you know, really great with that. I've been really wanting to be stepping into my toes for mono but the price was kind of out of my range if i wanted to do the 2600 with mono it was a good over three grand starting off but if they make a mono version of this i may switch over to mono for something like this especially don't really need anything that's huge but be able to get both best of both worlds with this so you can find links of how to purchase or uh, to pre-order the 585 MC Pro. Links will be down in the description of where to buy it. And as always, if you like this kind of content and you want me to review more of these, maybe I'll get my hands on one of these from ZWO. And we'll be able to do live test it for you going forward. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next video. Clear skies, and have a great one.